All right, folks, it's bass action back in action here. This is our last video of the entire school year, so you can definitely celebrate that. It is another long one, so hang on. Um, just like on our other rotation example, you should already have copied all of this down, and then we're gonna walk through it and add some colors and um, talk about a few parts of it, but that'll be easier than trying to write it and follow along at the same time. All right, so back up here at the top again, just like before, we would scan this from left to right, looking for an XY term. If you see an XY term, then you know that this conic's been rotated. From there, that means that you have to go through the additional formulas to determine the type of conic. We can't use the shortcuts that we did in the very beginning of our chapter. So I see the XY term, I identify the A, the B, and the C, just like before, I'm going to do my B squared minus my 4AC. Cleaning that up, I'm going to get my 576 minus my 5,576, which makes this negative less than zero then. So I can see that we are going to have an ellipse. Again, this is just helpful for us because then when we get to the end, if we wanted to graph it, we would know what we're going to graph. And also it gives us a clue as to what our final equation should look like. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the angle of rotation. So remember, first we would ask you the type of conic, then the angle of rotation, and these would be questions I could ask on the test. To find the angle of rotation, again, we're just going to follow our formula. It's a cotangent to theta. Remember, I made this little link here because that's our clue to do A minus C. So my 34 minus my 41 over the negative 24, and then that simplifies to seven over 24. So at this point right here, we have something very different than the previous video, because in this one, this is not a number from our unit circle. So we're gonna have to do a little bit more work with it, okay? First, we're going to find the actual angle. So what we're going to do is, just like before, we're going to focus on the cotangent and the seven over 24. And since this is not from our unit circle, what we're going to do is we're gonna use our calculator. So what I've done in my calculator, calculator already is I did an inverse tangent. So I did an inverse tangent. And then of course I flipped the fraction because I needed the reciprocal, so 24 over seven. And when I typed that in my calculator, that gave me the 73.7. Then I needed to remember that the whole angle isn't 73.7, that's a two theta. So that's actually double of what I need. So my final answer for the actual angle of rotation is this 36.9, okay? So we're gonna save that. That's gonna help us if we needed to, if we were gonna actually graph it and rotate the axes. The next thing that we wanna do is we're going to need to ultimately find these new xy terms. Well, we can't find those xy terms without being able to have a sine and a cosine. And right now we only have this angle of rotation and a cotangent to theta. We need sine and cosine of theta. So we are going to go back and in order to actually find the angle we're going to use, we're gonna find the triangle for the angle of rotation. That means that we're going to go back and we're going to use our half angle formula from earlier in the semester. So we take this ratio that we have right here and we're gonna be able to draw a triangle from that. So we know that our cotangent is our adjacent over the opposite. So from that, I went ahead and I drew this triangle in the first quadrant, my adjacent and my opposite did my quick Pythagorean theorem, got me my hypotenuse, and then recognized and properly labeled that this angle is the two theta, not theta. Now, once I have this triangle, I can jump into this formula. If I recognize that two theta over two will just give me a theta, okay, because that'll cancel, and that'll give me a theta, that allows me then to get to this step right here and have a cosine theta. Then I just read from this. So one half, and then I'm gonna do one plus cosine two theta. So I'm just gonna read from my triangle. So I have my one half, my one, reading from my triangle, my cosine is seven over 25. 
We've done this before. We're just going to clean all this up on the inside. Remember, we would have had to get our common denominators here. So we actually would have had a 25 over a 25. And then we would have simplified that all together. Once you clean all that up, you'll get 16 over 25. So our cosine theta is the square root of 16 over 25. That's just a nice 4 over 5. That is a lot of work and you've got to be very, very careful as you're going through this process. Once we have that cosine theta is 4 fifths, then we can actually draw this triangle right here. Okay, so we're going to have two triangles that we have to draw, but we're ultimately only going to use the second one. So from this second triangle, this is going to allow us to actually find these new xy terms. So we'll have, of course, our x prime, but then cosine theta, we read from the theta triangle. Our sine theta, we read from the theta triangle. So you can see I've filled those in and wrote this together as a single expression. Okay, just one nice expression that's going to help us. Repeating that process, working with those um, conversion formulas, reading from the theta triangle, then we would get this expression. Again, sine theta and cosine theta came from this triangle. That's where I got the three-fifths and the four-fifths. Now, once you have all of that, we're back to what we did before, and we're just going to use our original equation. So we're going to take this original equation, and anywhere there's an x, we're going to substitute the x formula. Anywhere there's a y, we're going to substitute the y. So that's all that I've done here. And notice that I did use the primes in my initial substitution. Anytime I had my coefficients, I put those nicely over one to help us properly align numerators and denominators. Then my purple that I have right here, what I did is I looked through and just predicted what my future denominator would be once everything was expanded. And I saw that once everything was expanded, my largest denominator was going to be 25. So I knew that when I'm done, I'm going to want to multiply everything by 25 to clear it out. So let's just follow our colors again. The first thing that I did was I took this first expression here. And remember, I squared the denominator and that got me my 25. And then I had to foil the whole numerator and I was able to do it in my head, but you might not. You might need to multiply it and actually write it out before you can multiply it out. I also properly remembered the 34, and I brought that down. And then, of course, I brought down the 25. Then I went to the next expression, and, of course, I foiled all of this. The denominator still gave me a 25. I was able to easily foil that numerator to get this whole expression. And then I also needed to remember the 24, and I needed to remember that it was negative. I have to be very, very careful. And I brought the 25 down again. Next, I foiled again. So I did my y. So when I foiled this, the denominator gave me 25. I foiled the numerator in my head. You might need to write it out to get all of this. And then my 41. I'm going over the foiling a little less on this because by now you've had some practice foiling these. But just one quick discussion about it. 3x prime squared gave me 9x squared. Notice I did not write the primes in this step. Then I had this product of 12 and I had to multiply it by 2. That gave me the 24. The 4y prime would have given me a squared, gave me a 16y squared. Again, I dropped the primes for this step. Lastly, I have my 25 is what came down here. I forgot to highlight my other, my 41 coefficient. And then again, all the way down, I brought this 25. Remember, we're stacking this because it's going to help us be able to eliminate our values a little bit better. So the 25s cancel, I distribute a 34. You're going to want a calculator for these. That gives us that. 25s cancel, distribute negative 24. 
gives me the next expression. 25s cancel, distribute the 41s, gives me that. And then of course, 25 times the negative 25. So remember, if you did the whole thing right, then all of your x, y terms should beautifully cancel out. If they don't, you know that you've made a mistake. Ours do, in fact, all cancel out. I collect all my x squares, that gets me 625. I collect all my y squares, that gets me the 1250. My negative 625 that's on the left, I went ahead and moved it immediately to the right. Dividing everything through by that 625, so I'm effectively dividing everything through by 625, we've done this a lot by now, gives us our final answer of x squared over one, you don't have to write that one, y squared over two, all equals one, okay? So just before I stop, I just want to reiterate a couple things that are the challenge parts. When you get to this cotangent two theta and it's not something from the calculator, or not something from the unit circle, you're gonna have to type it in your calculator. You have to make sure to flip the fraction and then set it equal to the two theta. You're going to need to draw a triangle based on this ratio, finishing with Pythagorean theorem, and then applying your half angle formula using this triangle so that you can get down to the new triangle that will allow you to write your conversion equations. There's a lot happening. You're gonna to have to go slow and really take your time.